as you said, um, well, first of all, I, I would like to, to thank you and to thank also Sol and all the organizers of, of this amazing, amazing conference. Uh, hopefully, it will be the, the second edition of many editions coming in the future. And um, yeah, as you said, no, I, I, I mean, it's, it's, it's great to host uh, so many international speakers, very first level, I mean, world leaders in their, in their fields. But we thought, okay, most of the times we, we are hosting uh, people to tell us how wonderful projects that they are doing in their different countries. But we thought that it was the time to say, okay, let's put ourselves in value. And, and we are in a very unique moment in Barcelona right now. And I think we are in the beginning of something big. And because if, if you look back in, in, into the city of Barcelona and, and you will see, and it's something that we have spoken um, yesterday and during the day today, we are in a very specific moment in history, not only in the city, no, but we have gone through different industrial revolutions as, as Peter was talking yesterday. And it seems that right now we are setting the conditions um, for both the maker, the Fabi movement, the open and the share movement to get together and really shape something, something that could become a city model. Not only in terms of infrastructure, because we have always thought in cities about the space itself or the infrastructure, but actually in terms of the relationships be between people, in terms of the economy generation, and in terms of the productivity within the city. So this is why I, I, I tried to put together these amazing people that is really activating the city and, uh, of Barcelona. Javi Creus is co-founder of, uh, is founder of Ideas for Change and also part of the Open Knowledge Foundation uh, in Spain and Europe. Uh, Cristobal Garcia, he leads uh, uh, together with Albert Cañigueral the We Share Node in, in Spain, but also he's an activator in Europe of, of, of the sharing and collaborative economy. Maya Fuster, she's a researcher about the, the implications of internet in society. And also, I, I'm very interested to hear about what's the governance of all of this that is going around and how we can turn it into public policies. That is very important. And Cecilia Tham is, is a, is a super maker and founder of Makers of Barcelona and, and also a very interesting person in terms of the different backgrounds that, that she has. No? One of the things that we, that we want to live here and, and one of the things I would try to do is not, is not to be the one that holds the questions and try to uh, point to each one, of the, uh, each one of the speakers. What we're going to do is we're going to listen to them and then afterwards, I'm going to shoot one question, one general question. One of them is going to answer it, and the one that answers the question is going to make the next question. So the idea here is the only thing that I'm going to try to do is to avoid some kind of fight or you know, some kind of very strong discussion or some bottles flying between the, the, the speakers. But the idea is to do uh, this kind of discussion in a more, in a more uh, horizontal way. So I think that, Javi, you can start. And it's a pleasure being here. This setting is absolutely impressive. And I'm very happy to share with you some starting ideas. Let's see. Uh -oh. OK. Ooh, ooh, ooh. That's the end. OK, here. I'm going to make a brief introduction about why proprietary is not anymore necessarily more efficient than shared. And I'm trying to relate that about with how we're going on in the city like taking advantage of this new kind of setting. And first thing I want to realize is that production systems, productions, production systems, we are told by economists, I'm an economist myself by education, is made out of capital, human resources, and other natural resources which are disposable or you can put into production, no? And what we're seeing is that uh, capital is changing its nature some way in the sense that uh, it's not only concentrated capital we have, but we have distributed capital through crowdfunding. We're seeing that you can start projects without asking to a concentrated capital, but rather ask 10 people for a lot of capital, you ask 10,000 people for little capital, and you can build projects on that. In Barcelona, we have a strong relationship with Noteo, Goteo, with God Berkami. There are enough crowdfunding operations Capital has become as well alternative. We're seeing lots of social markets, social coins, which are based on trust. And we have Ecosol here, which is now funding itself to get bigger as well. 
and we have many local currencies. We've seen bitcoins, we've seen droppies, we see ways of producing capital which are not related to actually to euros or dollar or legal currencies, so to say. And capital has become, in its use, almost universal. It's not that, like 100 years ago, when you bought a machine and you want to maybe make trains, and maybe you failed, you couldn't do anything else with the machines because they were specialists for trains. Right now, all we use is our equipment, which are pretty universal. You may start a design agency, and if you're not successful with the same machine, you can build any other business. It's the same with what's uh, happening with work. We've seen the emergence, and Cristobal will speak further about that, of the what we call the collaborative citizen. There's so many people in our society which are creating so much value in their spare time that in the time they're selling to their companies or their institutions. If we think, for example, about Wikipedia, it's made with a fraction of the time that only people in the US take watching TV for a year. So we, we're putting in place all this capacity to build things with our knowledge, or with our, when we, when we start exchanging apartments, for example, or sharing rights in cars, we're determining, in, in some way we're affecting the urbanization of the city. We're opening tourist zones where they weren't uh, planned. We're defining where we open co-working spaces, for example, of maker spaces. We're finding new uses to buildings that used to be something else. When we, when we share rights, we're affecting the traffic in the city. We're affecting the transportation system. So there's a new agent, which is the collaborative citizen, which is shaping our economy, is shaping our lives. And third, concerning resources, we've got quite an abundance of bits, any information, any software platform, any maker platform or maker design you want to get. It's easy to get and we've got very few atoms. We know we have to reutilize, we have to be careful with natural resources. This kind of new mix of distributed alternative capital with intelligent citizens which are taking the lead, not only in the economy but as well in shaping the cities themselves, and this abundance of resources, which are knowledge resources, and the consensus on the scarcity of material resources are shaping new types of economic developments. And what's happening here is that there are mainly two ways to group. A community, I define a community as a group of people who share a resource. A community is built upon a shared resource. That means that people who gather in a community and gather a resource, their first objective is to conserve that resource, to keep it alive. Second objective is to ameliorate it. So people who share a resource, could it be Linux, could it be Wikipedia, could it be Arduino, they share a resource. So first objective is to keep it alive and people who dare to propose innovation upon that or dare or try to make a living out of that are basically entrepreneurs, which is a very different attitude. Probably half these people here is entrepreneur, maybe not in the economical uh, way, but it's entrepreneur in the way that takes something from the common and try to shape it to provide some kind of value to someone else. While corporations, companies, it could be the same group of people, but they don't share a resource, what they share is a goal. So it's not that much about what they have, it's about they want to attain. It's not about conservating what they already have, it's about conquering new spaces, new markets, new products, new whatever. And that's a different way of going about. It's not that we see entrepreneurs any, anymore, we see employees, and all, all of us that have been, have been employees, at least for a while, know how different it feels either to be an employee or an entrepreneur. So, if these communities are showing us in the market, in uh, scientific research, in automotive construction, for example, with Wikispeed, that they can be more efficient in the sense that they can do more things with less resources, or they can do the same things in very little time, because they share the way of going about, there are new contributions, there are new ways, new economical com combinations which are possible. And you can at the same time, and if you want to be resilient and you want to be ready for changes and you are, want to have a healthy base value which grows not only with your resources, there are ways to at the same time 
contribute to the system, contribute to the common resource, and on the other hand, develop a competitive, sustainable position. And we're seeing many operations here in the city of people who are sharing either space, sharing knowledge, sharing workshops, sharing material things, and they're going this way. They're not only creating abundance, rather than managing scarcity, they are by themselves create, creating lifestyles or ways of links that could be sustainable on the long run. So, what my invitation is whether, when you think about an activity, when you think about putting on some kind of operation, I believe it's wise right now to make yourself three questions. First question is, what can I share? What can I share openly with everyone without demanding, without asking for <coughs> pardon or permission for people to use it? Or what kind of communities could I contribute to make my value base growing in a spontaneous way? Second question is, with whom should I cooperate in a more closed environment so as to keep innovation running. It's very difficult within any organization, as big as it may be, and General Electric is a good example for that, to keep innovation with uh, just one cultural framework. An organization usually get a single uh, way of thinking of ways, so I need cooperation with my business ecosystem to keep innovation running. And third, and important, is what should I keep for myself? If I give something to everyone, if I share another part with my business partners, what do I keep for myself? And we are seeing kind of designs that allow to do this. We've got here David Quartelius for Arduino who spoke yesterday, and as you may know, they give out the plans of, of Arduino, they cooperate with any organization which is happy to develop projects based on Arduino, but at the same time they keep the trademark just to differentiate the official, let's say, Arduinos from the Arduino copycats. And that's all I wanted to share with you. Thank you very much.